he's still doing that. I think if you just open the screens a little bit, that would be more of a ventilation. Oh, is it on the back floor? No, I think it's in the back floor. Um, I'm a stage on that drawer about the hampers. Put it in the room and see what they do back here. Well, if they do a risk assessment, they the day. Well, they do, they did the whole time last year. Yeah. The only thing is going to be if I feel what we're going to do. Um, we're going to ask, would it be possible to use the end of it at least if we do, just to put the story for you in? So, uh, how much am I going to get?
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We conclude the story of Jonah this morning. <clears throat> Just before it's read, I'll give us the catch-up for those that hadn't heard the gospel the reading yesterday. And we have Jesus being asked to teach the disciples to pray. Incredibly powerful. In the Jonah story, who is it that's learning about mercy? We all need to, always, asking the Lord to be merciful with us, but in turn, offering mercy and forgiveness to each other. All things in heaven and earth were made for you and through you. Lord, have mercy. You lead us to salvation through your death and resurrection. Christ, have mercy. You remain in us through the love we share. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We continue to be conscious of those who are not physically with us, those who feel they cannot return at the moment, and pray the Holy Spirit will join us together in love and forgiveness. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. So with Jonah, Jonah, the story so far, God called him to go and prophesy. He didn't fancy it, so he ran away. The Lord calls him back and recommissions him. He goes and preaches, but says to the Lord, what's the point? You're going to forgive them anyway. And it says he goes across the city of Nineveh for three days. It took three days to cross. It's obviously a statement of this is a perfect action of God. No city at that time would take three days to cross. And again, we hear other numbers reminding us of this powerful imagery of God within the story. We now discover what a curmudgeon Jonah is. A reading from the prophet Jonah. Jonah was very indignant. He fell into a rage. He prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, oh Lord, is not this just as I said would happen to when I still at home? That is why I went and fled to Tarshish. I knew that you were a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, relenting from evil. So now, Lord, please take away my life, for I might as well be dead as go on living. The Lord replied, Are you right to be angry? Jonah then went out of the city and sat down to the east of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God arranged that a castor oil plant should grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head and soon his ill humour. Jonah was delighted with the castor oil plant. But at dawn next day, God arranged that a worm should attack the castor oil plant and it withered. 
Yet, when the sun rose, God arranged that there should be a scorching east wind. The sun beat down so hard on Jonah's head that he was overcome and fed to death, saying, I might as well be dead as to go on living. God said to Jonah, Are you right to be angry about castaway plan? He replied, I have every right to be angry to the point of death. The Lord replied, You are only upset about a castor oil plant, which cost you no labour, which you did not make grow, which sprouted in a night and was perished in night. And I am not feeling sorry for Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who could not tell their right hand from their left, to say nothing of all the animals. The word of the Lord. Your response to the psalm is, You, O Lord, have mercy and compassion. You, O Lord, have mercy and compassion. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Give joy to your servant, O Lord, for to you I lift up my soul. You, O Lord, have mercy and compassion. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who come. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. You, O Lord, have mercy and compassion. All the nations shall come to adore you and glorify your name, O Lord, for you are great, and do marvellous deeds, you who alone are God. You, O Lord, have mercy and compassion. Let us stand to greet the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia.
the Hebrew Bible is the God of compassion. We have it again and again in the Psalms. So I, I was right to say that was not your approach. You're yeah. all being fooled. The Old Testament is the God of anger. Um, we've got fluffy Jesus in the New Testament. That's not the way you have faith, is it? Yeah. Good, good. I'm glad I spoke up for you. It's wonderful to remind us God is merciful, so we must be merciful with ourselves, which at time, times is a very difficult one for each of us, but obviously always to each other. And uh, as always in preparing for Mass, I was using one of my source books, and interestingly, it made a huge mistake. It talked about the Our Father and said, of course, Jesus used the word Abba, which just means Father. I know from reading scripture scholars it does, and the scholars say it's one of those words that you really can't translate by one other word. You'd have to use half a dozen to get the meaning for Abba. It's more than daddy, it's more intimate, and they keep on going on paragraph after paragraph. So strange that my source book tried to simplify it. So when we come to the prayer to our Abba, the kingdom prayer, let's be aware it's calling us again to be aware of the absolute intimacy that Jesus had with the Father. The Father and I are one, and that we're called into this intimacy through our baptism. So let's really be aware of it, and as I encourage the children on occasion, put your hand on your heart to make sure you're praying with an open heart to our Abba. So let's pray that we will be always increasingly people who reflect the love and the mercy of our Abba. Lord, hear us. Lord, pray on the Alpha course last night, it was, it was really quite annoying, disappointing. The number of people interviewed on the street, they just came out with the most crazy things about the person of Jesus, let alone the loving relationship between Jesus and the Father through the Spirit. And just how sad that Western society absolutely seems to have lost its Christian roots and has no sense of the wonder and the joy that is there on offer for each and every one of us. So we pray for our work of renewal here in St. Maximilian Kolbe and the work that so many parishes now across the country and the world are picking up to allow the Holy Spirit to renew us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus. The intention of Pope Francis for the month of October is that all Catholics will become missionary disciples. It's a, the two words, he was the one that put them together. They had been used separately, but he put them together for us. So let's hear his call to be missionary disciples where we live. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We have an awful lot of requests for prayer on the WhatsApp group, so we're very conscious of the number of people that are ill throughout the parish, across the town, some of course related and known to you. So we lift them to the Healing Father. Lord, heal us. Lord, and our intention for the Mass is to pray for diocesan vocations to the priesthood. Lord, heal us. We ask you, Father, to hear the prayers of your children, to grant them for us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and the praise of the Lord accept it. Our God, the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your, of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have 
pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So very definitely with open hearts we pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will and reign forever and ever. Amen. Obviously, I'm offering the sign of peace to everyone, including the sisters and brothers with us online. But please, again, through the Holy Spirit, extend your peace, the peace of the Spirit, to them. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we receive. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.